So we've seen all the unit operations, but when I say when I say seen, I mean theory. We haven't actually went to the lab and checked out. This might be a reactor. This might be piping. This might be a distillation column. I don't know. I had no idea, but there are plenty of unit operations right here. And the important part is not only know how they work, but actually go and recognize the equipments and know how to work with them and so on. It's kind of funny if you go to a chemical plant and you don't even recognize a distillation column, but you do know how it works. So it's funny that you will say, yeah, I can model the reflux ratio. I know how much is the heat duty of the reboiler, the optimal feed, number of stages, condensation, partial condensation or full condensation, but I cannot recognize it in real life. So that's very, very uh, not funny, even shameful. Now, what do we see in unit operation labs? Typically, you may have one up to two labs, or maybe you have one lab per, uh, per unit operation, so you will have four mini labs. That depends on your university, of course. That's what I saw. You either have one semester or two semester long unit operation labs, or you have four mini labs that go uh, on the same courses as heat exchange and so on. So the first thing you see on a lab is lab safety because safety goes first and we don't want people getting hurt or people destroying the very expensive lab in the university. So we understand about safety and how to dispose all the very pollutant stuff, chemicals and so on. So now that you actually know how to behave in the lab, we start analyzing momentum, reactor, heat, mass transfers. and Maybe you can even play with some plants, small plants, pilot plant, because it's essentially just the construction of plenty of unit operations. Anyways, let me show you one by one. Typically in momentum you will see pumps. If you're lucky, you will see fluidized and packed beds, compressors. And very typically you will see friction. How much friction and pump loss do you have in a piping system? Then reactor, if you're lucky, you will see some plug flow reactors and some CSTRs. I'll say that the batch reactor is the most typical one, so you must have this one at least. Then we go for heat exchange. You will see probably shell and tube, but double thumbs if you have double pipe and plate exchange. So if you have that in your lab, consider yourself lucky because it is a very full lab. Now we see also evaporations and condensers. That's a very easy, actually kind of boring. Depends on your structure, but if you do not like it, you will say, well, that was very simple to do. And the most fun part I will say is mass transfer because you start to get to know the distillation, binary distillation, maybe even some liquid liquid extraction. You might have, if you're lucky, an absorption column Cooling tower, I think it's depending on the university. Sieve tower, yeah, it's also very, very specific, but you might have it, it's not that expensive. Drying operations. And consider yourself very, very lucky if you have all these uh, operations, which is membranes. You want to play with membranes, maybe even invert osmosis so you can purify water. Uh, filters actually is very easy. Filters is very common, so ignore this one. Adsorption will also be a very not that typical to see in a common unit operation lab, but you may have it. Also, it depends a lot on the research scope of the university. Maybe you have a, a lot of masters and PhDs working in the university or studying in the university. Well, that will help you to have a very good place or lab unit operations if you will probably not have plenty of absorption. And last but not least, if you have pilot plants, maybe I remember we had this biodiesel plant, it was very fun to operate and know that we could use it if we wanted to do some biodiesel experiments. And you will understand about how to operate the plant, about the unit operations, mass balances, energy balances, and maybe even about prices and costing. Or typically you also have a distillation column, you may have oil and water or whatever application you have, maybe ethanol and water, in order to understand the isotrope, it's better to 
try playing with the distillation column and discover what's an asiotrope rather than just studying it. So why do we need it? Unit operation lab. Well, to I love it because it, one thing is to actually know, and another thing is to understand and know what and how they are. So if I tell you about a filter, you will maybe just use this block and say this is a filter in the diagram. But you actually go to the lab and you will see that there's plenty of these little cages and you don't understand why there are plenty of them and you don't know that you need to clean them and so on. Well, you will understand that the cleaner the filter, the most efficient, the least clean, the least efficient. And you will also see that as you increase the flow or decrease the flow, you will start seeing how separation processes go better or worse. Also, as I told you in the beginning of the video, I really think it's kind of shameful that you go on your first job interview and you're working in the chemical plant with the senior chemical engineer or maybe just a process engineer and you see a lot of equipment and you don't actually know what's that. And maybe even they will ask you, do you know what's that equipment for? And you will say, no, I have no idea, sir. I, I can only draw it. So that's kind of shitty. Also, once again, don't be kind of clown. So at least try to Google some images before or try to go, if you haven't tried, you just go and check out the unit operation lab at your university or just go on the internet and write unit operations. It's so easy to understand and see how they work. Very important, you will want to practice with them. The more you practice, the more actual feelings you do for it, you will remember the, more, the most. Also, you want to design, maybe design an experiment. Let's say how much can we get with, I don't know, let's say operate 10 kilograms per minute. How much filtrate can we get in X time amount, X amount of time. Operation as well, you want to know, well, I need to open this valve first because then I can move this valve and it starts flowing first you don't want flowing the product here, so you start flowing. So you actually know how to operate it and you want to optimize it. Eventually you will see ah, what happens if we buy two extra trays right here or maybe we make them a little bit larger or less size and so on. And there are, maybe you get to know that they are cheaper or expensive and so on. So there are plenty of opportunities in these filters. You can always improve a process, always, literally always. And um, yeah, actually work with them. Yeah, that's what one is. I was explaining you. And once again, I think this is the most important part, eventually to get a better understanding of the basic principles that lie behind that. So it's if you do this, A plus B goes through a filter, and I separate A and B. Well, that's fine. But I will love to see you doing that in this here, in this part right here. Open this valve, and then open this valve and then don't forget that you actually need to open this valve so water goes flow in and don't forget to clean up these and install it correctly because then you're going to have leakage so that would be awesome if you could do it and the basic principle that means or that lies on behalf of chemical and mechanical concepts so first of all mechanical but eventually chemical well that's what you want to understand at the end of these unit operation labs.